last seminar of uh, 2023. Um, our speaker today is Pierre Béor, and he will, um, his title is All I Want for Christmas <laughs> is an Algorithm to Detect a Sturmian Word Accepted by an Omega Automaton. Thank you, Narad. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Pierre Béor. I'm a PhD student at the University Paris-Saclay uh, in uh, France, south of Paris. Uh, and I will talk to you about uh, uh, results about disability in combinatorics and words. And in particular, uh, I will present to you some algorithms to detect uh, some in world accepted by Omega Automata. So we'll begin by uh, explaining the terms in the title. Uh, I won't explain Christmas because it would be a bit long. So I will begin with Sturmian world. Uh, so in this context, uh, I'm interested in infinite worlds. In particular, I'm interested in uh, mono infinite worlds. That means that uh, my worlds are indexed by N, uh, the set of positive integers, and not by uh, Z. Even though everything I say will work in the context of uh, Z, but it's just tedious to, for the notations and for the proofs. Um, the, I will use the complexity way to introduce German words. Uh, and what it means is that we need the notion of a factor. A factor is a contiguous subword of uh, an infinite word. So here, A, B, 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 A is a subword of the word on the right. And we can define something called the complexity function, Px of n, uh, that counts the number of distinct factors of length n in an infinite world. And uh, why do we do this? Uh, there's, uh, because there's a celebrated results from Combinatorics and Words, the morse headland theorem, which states that a word, an infinite word, is ultimately periodic if only if, at one point, its complexity function is lesser than or equal to n. Uh, so this defines a kind of border in what behaviors are possible for the complexity function. And uh, this has uh, led to a natural question, which is, is there something just uh, beyond this border? And the answer is yes, Sturman words. Uh, so what are Sturman words? They are defined as the words whose complexity is n plus one for every n. And one of the greatest feats of Kunetrix and words in the last uh, years is uh, in the last decades, it's that Sturman words exist. Uh, you can see them as the simplest aperiodic words because they, if a word was to be simpler than a human word, it would um, go through the morse uh border and be ultimately periodic. Uh, the most well-known human word is the Fibonacci word, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, they have a lot of combinatorial and uh, dynamical interpretations. So here, here on the left, uh, we have the definition through mechanical words, uh, which is how do you can be see it as um, how does a line cross the unit uh, grid uh, on the Euclidean plane. And on the right, you have the definition through uh, the rotation of a circle. Um, now, the next term in the title I will explain is Omega Automata. So uh, in computer science, if you want to study finite worlds, you will, a classical way to do it is to use finite automata. And if you want to study infinite worlds, the pendant is to study Omega Automata. Uh, here I will, uh, on the first part, I will focus on one model, but in fact, there are multiple models of Omega Automata. And in this first part, I will focus on the model of the weak Omega Automaton. What, it, what is it? Basically, it's just a labeled graph with some special, some states, some edges, which are labeled. Some of those states, some are initial. And you say that a word is accepted if you can just go in your graph, reading your uh, word, your infinite word, and you never have a bug. So for instance, if you consider W the periodic word of period A, B, 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 A, 
uh, you can see that you can go uh, from the left. You start from the left here. Then you go A, B, 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 A. And you continue this computation infinitely. Uh, so it's a, an infinite work on your omega automaton, and you're happy the word is accepted. Uh, it, uh, the continuation is to define what is the language of an omega automaton, which is the set of words which are accepted. So I will often speak about language of an omega automaton and what is inside, what is not. Now that I have the two main notions of my title, uh, I will ask what is the clash between the two. So when you have an omega automaton, a uh, first question, which is a bit of the equivalent of the domino problem, but for omega automaton, it's given an omega automaton, is its language empty or not? Um, and in fact, uh, this question is quite easy to solve uh, because if you just have to find a cycle in your omega automata. If you find a cycle, the language is not empty. If you don't find this, any cycle, you can't uh, accept any infinite word. Uh, so it means that a language is non-empty if only if it contains an ultimately periodic word. Uh, but the thing is that uh, ultimately periodic words are a bit boring. Uh, so uh, the next question becomes, uh, Given an omega automaton, does it accept an aperiodic word? Uh, this question is not trivial. Uh, and it's in fact, uh, I've never found any literature on it, but I know that there is, it's a folkloric answer. Uh, it's decidable. You just have to check your cycles and you have to check that there are at least two cycles which don't share a primitive root. Uh, so given an omega button, I, I can decide whether it accepts an aperiodic word. But up to now, I have not specified which kind of aperiodic word. And since I have favorite aperiodic words, the next question is obviously, given an omega automaton, does it accept the Fibonacci word, or does it accept at least one Sormian word? Uh, in the rest of the presentation, I will show you that in the case of the weak omega automaton, it's decidable. And uh, I will continue on the rest of the presentation to talk to you about the case of Bushi Automata. So to do this, I will need a new definition for Sermian words because complexity is, uh, won't be enough to uh, continue. This definition is the definition through uh, aesthetic representations and it uses substitutions. So on the top, you can see uh, the four reindeers of Christmas. LA, LB, and R, R and RB, uh, which are the which are four specific substitutions uh, that we will use in the following. Uh, there's a result, and what I use is a result of Arnaud and Rosie, which states that a word is termian if only if it can be infinitely desubstituted by uh, some substitution between LA, LB, and R, R and B and I can change infinitely between the A's and the B's. What does it mean to be infinitely desubstitutable? It means that given W, I can just go back in time going through the substitutions. An example to be a bit clearer. So here we have the best word in the world, uh, the Fibonacci word. And here I have rewritten the definitions of LA and LB. What I claim is that the Fibonacci word can be desubstituted through the substitution LA. How do I do it? Well, I just cut my word between A, B, and A, the images of LA. And then I just go back to see, well, if I have an AB, I put a B. If I see an A, I put an A. So I have a pre-image uh, of Fibonacci through LA. OK. And now I have a new word, new word, and I will do it through LB. So I will take a pre-image from this new word through LB. So what I do, I once again just cut my word, and I take the pre-image. And it gives me another word. In fact, because it's the Fibonacci word, it's once I have come back to the Fibonacci word, which is a bit of a special case, so it shows that I can once again substitute 
between LA and LB. So I, and I can do this process infinitely. So it's infinitely desubstitutable. Um, and also I have, um, I, I'm alternating between LAs and LBs. So I'm infinitely alternating between, between A's and B's. Okay. Um, why am I doing, am I using such a definition? Uh, first, there's what about the classical definitions? Uh, they are often using combinatorial properties. And the problem of combinatorial properties is, th is that they don't provide me many constructive ways to build uh, some words. Uh, or they are a bit um, tricky uh, to use with omega to matter. On the other hand, I have this uh, definition through substitutions. And they have two main uh, advantages. First, substitutions are easy to make algorithms with. It's easy to, to, to deal uh, for computers to deal with substitutions. And the other reason is that um, I have changed. If you, 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 you study the set of directive sequences, that is what uh, is the set of uh, substitutions you can use to desubstitute. Well, it's quite simple because it's only the condition alternating infinitely between A's and B's. And that is easily to implement for a machine, which is simpler than a Sumerian word itself, uh, which has to follow some tricky rules to be sure that uh, it exists. OK. Uh, now that I have substitutions, the question is, what do I do with substitutions and omega automata? Well, the thing is, I will remind you of results from uh, formal languages, uh, regular languages, that is often seen in bachelor uh, course. Uh, fine, uh, regular languages of finite automata are stable under inverse morphism. What does it mean? It means that if I have an omega automaton and a substitution, I can build a new omega automaton whose language is the pre-images of the first one through the substitution. So how do I do it? On the left, I have a uh, nomega automaton. In the middle, I have a substitution. On the right, I will build the corresponding omega automaton, the substituted omega automaton. How do I do it? First, if I want to build an omega automaton, I need states. So I will just put exactly the same states. In particular, I will have also the same initial states. And now I have to build edges. How do I do it? I, I begin with uh, the images of A. So the image of A through sigma is AB. And so what I do is I search for a path labeled by AB in A. So here I see AB. So I just, uh, so uh, cool, I have an image of sigma. And what I do now is that I link the first state with the last state. So I have an AB. Even if there are loops, it's not a problem. If I have A and that I loop on B, my first state is the left one and my last state is the middle one. So I put a, an edge labeled AB. And also if I have uh, a cycle labeled AB, well, it's not a problem. It's the same reasoning. I begin at this state, I end at this state, I put uh, an edge. So I have a loop A. So I can do this for every time I see an AB, it's, there's only a finite amount of such things. So here I, I do this. And thereafter, uh, I, so I've done it for the image of A and I have to do it for the image of B. So I do it for every time I see a BBA. And what I mean now is that if you have a work in A, in the omega to button A, which can be desubstituted through, through sigma, this desubstitution is accepted by sigma minus one of A. Okay, so uh, why do I bother with this? I have omega automata, I can desubstitute them. Okay. Uh, a, a, crucial, uh, um, a crucial information in what I did in, in this construction is that 
the number of states is constant under the substitution. So if I take my omega automata, omega automata, I will have to loop at some point. Uh, because there's only a finite amount of uh, distinct weak omega automata with a given uh, state set. So uh, what it means is that I can build a kind of graph which uh, describes every desubstitution of the original uh, automata through sigma. Uh, how can I use it? Well, if I wanted to desubstitute, uh, at the beginning I wanted to desubstitute words, now I can desubstitute graphs, and that's what I do. So, uh, first example, the Fibonacci word. Given an omega automaton, does it accept the Fibonacci word? Well, what do you do? You build the, the desubstitution graph I presented to you, which will have a loop at some point. And there's like two cases, uh, and it um, depends on uh, the behavior of the loop. First case, the every, uh, every um, omega automaton in the loop has an empty language. So uh, it means that um, my beginning automaton did not accept Arbitrary, arbitrarily large images uh, of uh, phi uh, in its language. That means that the original automaton refuses the Fibonacci word. And the, if, it's not, if, if everyone, uh, and it's either everyone is empty or everyone is non-empty, and if everyone is non-empty, uh, then it means that I can desubstitute infinitely, and thus uh, I accept the Fibonacci world. So here I gave ideas, but in fact, if you want to have a proof and a proper proof, you need to use topology. Uh, the result I just described is not new. Uh, it's a consequence of a paper by Carton and Thomas about um, finding substitutive work in Bushy Automata. And it has, it has also been reproved by Ville Salo uh, in uh, a paper about quasi-minimal subshifts. And it can be generated, obviously, because I did not really use the fact that it was the Fibonacci substitution. So given uh, an omega automaton and the substitution, I can just decide whether A accepts the word generated by sigma. Uh, what is, uh, yes, so I will re-insist, but what made the proof work is topology, mainly. Uh, a big and an important uh, property of omega automata, of weak omega automata, is that their language is closed using the pro-discrete topology. Uh, and that's why we, we, the, the algorithm will suffice. Um, also, yes, uh, everything I did can be extended to uh, uh, answer some tricky questions like, uh, does A accept a fixed point for sigma? Does A accept uh, a fixed point of the power of sigma? And things like this, but it's just, this one is just some technical details that you have to dive into to understand what happens. Okay, so I can decide whether uh, an automaton accepts the Fibonacci word, great but I wanted to study Sturmian world. So how do I go from Fibonacci world to the Sturmian world? Well, the thing is that uh, my remark about the number of states not changing does not depend of this, on the substitution. Here I have uh, an omega automaton. If I desubstitute through sigma or tau, I have six states, I have six states, it doesn't change. So what I can do now is that I can uh, create a sort of meta omega automaton. That is here, every one of the vertex is an, a weak omega automaton. And I can go from one to the other through the substitution. So for instance, I have uh, A1 and A2. If 
I, what it means that, uh, what does the graph mean? It means that uh, A2 is the desubstitution of A1 through sigma. And here I can do it with multiple substitutions, sigma, two, and well, if I had the four um, Arnaud-Rosy substitutions uh, which defined every Sturman word, I can do it with these four substitutions without any problem. So, uh, the main idea here is that given an omega automaton and a finite set of substitutions, I can build what is a meta omega automaton that will describe the infinite desubstitutions uh, with my set of substitutions. So how does it work for so many worlds? Well, I create this big meta omega automaton. And then I check if there's a walk in it that infinitely alternates between A's and B's, that is easier to find than just a Sturmian walk uh, in uh, an omega button because it's just a regular, uh, an omega regular condition to check. And I have to check that every omega button in this walk has no empty, uh, has, no, has not an empty language. This way, it will mean that uh, I can infinitely substitute the language through a direct sequence. Um, in fact, it can be, so I, I said that it worked on uh, Sturmian words, but once again, it's not restricted to Sturmian words. It works in other contexts, uh, in particular, whenever there's a, an aesthetic characterization of a family. So uh, there are two uh, examples here. Uh, first, it's about Arnaud Rosy words. So, which is a generalization of uh, Sturmian words with multiple letters. Uh, since it's just, it's, it can be described through an aesthetic uh, uh, characterization, you can just decide uh, whether the omega automaton, uh, the beta omega automaton, accepts uh, a, such, a, such a walk. And it can also be, uh, it also works in the case of min minimal ternary dendritic words which have been characterized by uh, um, uh, Gerhardt and uh, Lejeune and Leroy. Uh, because even though their, their characterization is very complicated, it's still just a regular characterization, so it's not a problem. Okay, so given an omega automaton, I can check if it accepts a Sturmian word. Uh, does it have consequences? Yes, obviously. Uh, first, if you... Uh, um, look at uh, the allow directive sequences, uh, you'd see that the allow directive sequences of Sturman words will describe an omega, a weak omega automaton. So it has some funny conditions, like uh, the set of allow directive sequences forms a closed subset. And uh, also, it needs to have a periodic sequence in it. What is the consequence? If an omega automaton accepts a Sturmian world, it accepts a morphic Sturmian world. Um, but it can, but uh, my results can also be used in well applied ways. Uh, it's a bit of a big word to say, but uh, uh, it has some consequences for some problems in combinatorics Erickson worlds and discrete geometry. So, uh, regarding combinatorics Erickson worlds, uh, for instance, there's the question of codings of Sturmian worlds. If I give you some finite words, uh, can they be uh, glued together to form a Sturmian world? Uh, well, hopefully I would like to find a, ca a combinatorial characterization, uh, but at least, well, it's decidable. I can't say much more, but well, it's decidable. In fact, uh, uh, with uh, Gwenel Richaume, we found a characterization if uh, you give me two words, uh, but uh, I have no idea how you could generalize it to more words. Um, and this has led to an interesting question that I uh, solved with a colleague of mine, uh, which works in uh, uh, discrete geometry, which is the question of gluing discrete segments. So uh, the, it's a question from discrete geometry. And what is the idea? It's if I give you some 
uh, models of discrete segments, can you glue them? Can you glue copies of them to form an infinite discrete line? So here on the left, you have, on the right, sorry, you have three models of uh, segments, S1, S2, and S3. And uh, here I show you what it means to concatenate copies of them. So I can glue them side by side, or I can glue them uh, corner by corner. And it will form an infinite discrete line. And here, yes, here it will work. It, it will fit like an infinite discrete line. Um, and well, we did this with discrete segments, but in fact, you, you can do this with, with in multiple dimensions. So if I give you some finite discrete uh, surfaces, can you glue them, uh, can you glue copies of them infinitely to form an infinite discrete plane? And uh, it's interesting because generally, uh, discrete geometry has a very easy problem. Well, they tend to want to minimize their complexity because generally they already have many algorithms. But in fact, uh, here we have a decidability difference between dimensions. So in the case of lines, the problem is decidable. You use literally the algorithm from before, just you have to translate what is a segment into a word. Uh, and it's undecidable for surfaces. Uh, and that is, uh, this one is fun, even though it's uh, uh, rather simple to prove. How do you do it? Is uh, you take your uh, surface, you can embed the domino problem, uh, the symbolic dynamics uh, domino problem in your uh, discrete geometry surfaces by making uh, puzzle pieces as polyominoes and they have to um, match to one another to, uh, to tile a plane. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, all the results I presented here uh, are basically present in a paper which has been uh, that uh, my PhD advisor uh, and I published six months ago at the Combinatorics Onwards conference, which happened in Umeå, Sweden. And here it will be more recent results uh, uh, where, well, I'm, I'm less sure of uh, how it works, but uh, I'm, well, we'll see what, uh, what happens. Uh, so uh, I did many things about weak omega automata. Great. But as implied by the name, weak omega automata, weak omega automata are weak. Uh, so can we extend the results to a stronger model of omega automata? Uh, so here is the, I will present the most classical uh, model of omega automata, which are Bushi automata. Uh, what is the difference with the first model? This time you have some accepting states. Uh, so here on the left, you can see that you have basically a graph but this time the bottom state is doubled. And so it means that it's an accepting state. So uh, this time you say that the word is accepted if it enables an infinite work that goes infinitely through accepting states. So for instance, you, here on the right, you have two words, W and W prime. W, well, you go from the initial state and you read A, B, 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 A, and so on and so forth. So if you take this computation, it will go infinitely through the bottom state. And so the value is accepted by A as a Bushy automaton. Whereas if you take the value prime, it starts here and it will do A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A. And it will just stay in the upper cycle. So it will well, it will not even cross the accepting states, but so to say the least, it will not cross it infinitely. So W prime, even though it labels a walk into the automaton, it does not label uh, a walk which passes infinitely through the accepting states. So that is the model of Bichy automaton, of Bichy automata. And uh, why is it useful? Well, why is it uh, solid? 
uh, well, in fact, it's stronger than weak omega automata. So uh, what I did earlier uh, will not, for the moment, be sufficient to treat Bushi automata. Uh, yes, so what, uh, why do we study Bushi automata also? It's because they can be used to define uh, um, monadic second order, second order logic uh, propositions. And so they have a lot of uh, uh, logic uh, applications. Uh, they can be used in verification. They have well, many, many cool properties. Okay, so my new objective is if I have a Bushi automaton, can I find a Strumian uh, word in its language? Can I decide if there's a Strumian word in its language? Uh, well, I will cheat a little bit because I will not study Bushi automata themselves. I will study edge Bushi automata. What changes here? Well, I don't have, uh, I, I don't have accepting states. I have accepting edges. So uh, here, for example, uh, I have two edges which are doubled. The one uh, coming from the bottom states. Uh, and it means that a long uh, word is accepted if and only if it goes infinitely through the accepting edges. Uh, however, uh, so however, this model is completely equivalent to uh, classical Bichu automata. Um, here on the left and the right, the two uh, models have the same language, for instance. So. I will just, uh, uh, when I study edge Bichy automata, it's just the same as Bichy automata. So I will continue just to say Bichy automata because it's simpler, but I will, I will treat with accepting edges rather than accepting states. Okay, so uh, in the first part of my presentation, I talked about um, desubstituting omega automata. And so the question becomes, can I desubstitute a Bichy automata? So here, uh, I have uh, uh, a Bushi automaton on the left, a substitution in the middle. Can I build a substitution on the right? And the answer is yes, you can do it. And how do you do? Well, you proceed just as before. So you have exactly the same state, even the same initial states. And now the question becomes, how do you build the new edges? Well, you do a bit of the same. So if you find A, B, with no accepting edge, you just put A in your new uh, omega automaton, in your new Bushi automaton. And the trick is if you have a path that is labeled by uh, an image of the substitution and that goes through at least one uh, accepting edge, well, you, put, uh, you say that the new edge is accepting. That's just you have to treat the notion of accepting edges. And you can continue this way, and you build a whole omega automata, omega automata uh, to do this. OK. Uh, so uh, what I did before. I don't, okay. Um, here is an omega automaton that the substitutes into itself through some substitution sigma. So the meta omega automaton should just be one state which loops into itself. And all the time it will just cross uh, if you, if you, you can search an infinite work on it with no state that has an empty language. Everything is okay, but it still doesn't accept the substitutive word associated. Uh, so here, if you take sigma infinite of B, it's just Uh, 
misting. Uh, so we can't rely on topology tools to conclude. Uh, so that's why I need uh, to have uh, more proper methods. Um, as I said earlier, there's a paper for uh, uh, I, I think everything, I hope everything is fine. Are you still hearing me? Just to be sure, I, I've continued, but I guess it's uh, it's good. Bit, uh, good for me. Okay, perfect. Um, so, Bushi Automata. Um, my purpose was given a Bushi Automaton. Does it accept a Somian word? Well, there's a paper from Carto and Thomas uh, from 2002, which uh, says that, which decides, given a Bushi Automaton and a substitution, if the substitutive word associated is in the language. I just failed earlier with my techniques, but there are other techniques which work. So uh, as a good PhD student, I will just use uh, the techniques which already work. Uh, and the thing is that we can adapt the techniques of Carto and Thomas, but only for the case of deterministic Bushi Automata. Uh, I will not go in detail into the proofs of Carto of uh, our method. Uh, first, because uh, we are still writing the proof, um, but mainly also because the methods of we have to take the proof of Carton and Thomas and twist it a lot to make it work. Uh, basically, they rely on some uh, algebraic uh, semigroups um, arguments. And um, to make it useful for Sturman words, we need to make it, uh, make it that their semigroups are proper groups like true groups. Uh, and we can do this using determinism uh, to search for uh, uh, a summing word in the language. The problem is that this determinism uh, assumption is very costly because it's literally we a weaker model than the general model of Vichy Automata. So we have an answer, but only in the case of um, of uh, deterministic automata. Okay, that sucks a bit. So we'll try to, to, to say things about non-deterministic Bushi automata. Uh, since we can't do say many things about uh, the, the language as a, itself, we'll try to say things about the computations. And one of the fun results that we have is that if a Bushi automaton accepts a summing word, it accepts, uh, uh, well, not a substitutive, in fact, but a morphic summing word. Uh, how do you do this? Well, you say that you can make uh, the computation um, substitutive. And a substitutive computation uh, will have to uh, uh, be labeled by a substitutive word. That's basically the idea. Um, once again, the details are a bit fuzzy. Uh, but uh, the thing is that we are not anymore uh, studying the Omega automaton itself, but we are uh, studying the computations on the Omega automaton. Um, a consequence of this work is that my problem of uh, detecting Sturmian world in Bushi automaton becomes semi-decidable. Why? Because I just have to enumerate the Sturmian substitutions. Uh, it's generated by the four uh, Arnaud Rossi substitutions. And then each time I apply the Carton Thomas algorithm. So it's a bit uh, stupid as a semi algorithm, but all semi algorithms are stupid. Uh, and so we have solved half our problem. And now the, but this way I don't really know how to uh, solve the other half. Uh, and so we will try to do things about computations. And here comes the magic of Christmas, uh, because we have a conjecture, which is that if a Bushi automaton accepts a Sturmian word, it accepts a Sturmian word where the computation is uniformly recurrent. 
there are intuitions behind these conjectures. Two main intuitions. First, I tried and I didn't find the counter example. And second, the idea is that if the labeled word is uniformly recurrent, as are all certain words, it should give a bound on the computations. Uh, and uh, why do we do this conjecture? Well, because if the conjecture is true, we can decide the problem. Uh, I know that it's a bit convenient as a, as a conjecture, but uh, if uh, we have a Bushy automaton, we can decide if the Bushy automaton accepts a summary where the computation is uniformly recurrent. Uh, we have an algorithm which is uh, basically the same as before, but with just extra steps. You build a meta homogamy automaton. Uh, this time, you will just completely forget the non accepting edges, the normal edges, and we just focus on the doubled edges. And uh, you check that there is at least one of the one way to uh, have a Stomian walk in uh, an edge uh, in well, no, in uh, one vertex of the meta omega button. Uh, well, sorry, I fumbled my whole description, but it's a bit complicated. Uh, but yes, we have an idea of algorithm, and it works. But it just detects some words whose computation are uniformly recurrent. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, I'm sorry, I've been a bit fast. Um, we have new decidable problems for commentators and words, so we have new ways to do things. And this has uh, given uh, many understanding of how uh, the language works and how Bushi automata and weak omega automata interact with uh, substitutions, in fact, also. And uh, there are, uh, and I, well, here I've tried already to extend my result to Bushi automata. I had not yet succeeded, but uh, hope is on the way. Uh, and uh, here are some possible extensions of what we did. First, uh, in fact, I treated the case of infinitely substitutable words, which was introduced by Gwenel Richaume in 2021. Uh, but it's uh, a ripoff from aesthetic representations. Uh, so the question becomes, well, can you just do it for aesthetic representations? And the thing is that it's very painful to do because uh, there's a slight difference between uh, aesthetic representations and um, uh, infinitely disputable words regarding the growth of letters. And so you have to check some uh, tedious conditions on the growth of letters. Uh, and also uh, the difference between aesthetic words and infinitely disputable words is not very big. So uh, uh, that here there's a, a subtlety that uh, you have to catch in your algorithm. Uh, regarding the, the conjecture, um, I have not uh, found a counter example by hand, but uh, you could just try to, to do it uh, not by hand. After all, we are doing a bit of computer science. But the thing is that the space to explore is very large. The space of Bushi Automata is exponential. Uh, so it's way too big to just be uh, um, trying everything to find the counter example. Um, uh, and also, uh, I have done it for uh, weak omega automata, for Bushi automata, but uh, there are multiple models you can do. Uh, in fact, you could uh, do it for uh, pushdown omega automata, which I don't know a lot about, but uh, it's an extension of uh, pushdown automata, but for uh, in the infinite case. And uh, also, uh, a thing that uh, is quite funny is that our methods work for random substitutions. Uh, that means that uh, we don't need the substitutions to be uh, deterministic to do things. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I'm sorry I've been a, a bit fast uh, in my presentation. So, oh, Thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Pierre?
So do you think anything should be decidable if you move to push down automata? I, I feel like... No, I think it's... Well, in fact, uh, if I go to push down automata, the problem is that uh, whereas for Omega automata, I, I had uh, uh, the, name number, uh, the same number of states and so it did not grow. Mm. If you do this for Persian automata, the number of states won't grow, but the rules will grow. Mm. And so it fails. Well, the, yes, yes. The current guess is that it, at least our methods will fail to, to do it for Persian automata. Another thing that I didn't say is that we tried to do it also for uh, square-free words. Uh, so if I give you an Omega automaton, does it accept a square free word? And we have no idea how to do it. So it's... Hmm. Uh, so in the case of minimal dendritic words, you had infinitely many substitutions. I think this is not an obstacle. Uh, if I remember well in the model of uh, France, you can... If you take the, you can break down the, the substitutions to uh, generate all the infinite substitutions using only a finite amount of them with an even, uh, uh, even uh, uglier automata and with some uh, conditions on uh, uh, this time, this thing has to be uh, visited infinitely times. And that is, that's okay in our model. So normally it should work for uh, minimal tandary tendric words, but uh, it's to be clear, I've not written the proof for uh, minimal tandary tendric words. So it's still, normally it works. I'm pretty sure it works. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions? Oh, sorry. Sorry, but uh, and then did they, from going to aesthetic words, um, what was uh, what was the problem? Then you cannot uh, do all substitute. No. Uh, why it doesn't work is because um, if you study an aesthetic, uh, the difference between aesthetic and infinitely distributed words is that in the aesthetic case, you start from a letter and you grow it infinitely. Whereas uh, for infinitely distribution, you just have infinite words at each point. And so you have to take into account the fact that, uh, uh, so if I remember well, uh, every aesthetic word is uh, infinitely distributable, but not the converse. And so you have to throw out some cases uh, which are infinitely distributable, but not uh, aesthetic. For instance, if you take uh, the identity, uh, there are words which are infinitely distributable by the identity, but which don't have an aesthetic representation. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take into account the growth, and I have not yet uh, found a way to take into account the growth of the letters for aesthetic representations. And if you look at the primitive uh, aesthetic sequences, um, maybe yes, I think I think it works in the case. Yes, okay. So, in the case of primitive aesthetic sequences, it will always work because it will just be infinitely distributable, so it should work. But it's in the case of not primitive that I don't know how to do. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um, if not, thank you very much, Pierre.